with Rondé Barber, Chris Myers, and we welcome you back to Raymond James Stadium. It's time for our Keys to the Game, brought to you by your local Lexus dealers. Time for a little Theater 101, and these people are ready for a show. Who writes these things? Break you a do. leg. <laughs> Don't break a leg. Don't break a leg. This team has been decimated by injuries all preseason. We know that. They need to get out of this game as healthy as possible. Secondly, it's the understudy. Every, nobody wants to be the understudy, but everybody's the understudy at some point. I remember being an understudy. This game will help identify who some of those guys might be going into week one at New Orleans. And finally, it's the final curtain, Chris. This, you can't tell me that this game means nothing to those 40 or 45 guys that are fighting for roster spots on both sides. It's your last chance, buddy, to confirm or deny whether or not you're going to get a spot on a roster in the NFL. This is your moment to shine. Dreams, careers on the line. All right, let's head down to the field. And Dan Lucas. Oh, guys, a, a few moments ago, the Buccaneers and the Jaguars observed a moment of silence to remember the victims of Sunday's tragic shootings at the Jacksonville Landing. It had an effect, obviously, on the Jacksonville community, and that includes the Jaguars. Defensive end Calais Campbell said he lives right across the river from the landing. He went to the, his balcony, couldn't believe the scene right in front of his eyes. Blake Bortles, the quarterback, his foundation fed all of the first responders for two days at the scene. It obviously had a great effect on that community and the Jaguars, the Buccaneers taking part tonight in remembering the victims. Thank you, Dan. Mike Evans is going to play in an online charity event on Monday to help raise money and honor the victims of that shooting and certainly a nice gesture on the part of Mike Evans. Buccaneers won the toss and want to receive. Jacksonville getting ready to kick off. Sean Wilson, the rookie free agent from Duke, from Charlotte, North Carolina, who has shined as a return specialist. He'll get more of a chance at running back tonight as well. He's deep. How electric was he last week in his couple of kick returns? We didn't get a chance to do that game, but I got a chance to watch it, and I got to tell you what, he went a long way to securing himself a roster spot with his performance last week. Let's see if he can recreate it here tonight with some running back duty, and yes, we'll see him return kicks all night. And Ryan Griffin comes out to lead the Bucs on offense. You know, the Bucs' top three quarterbacks this preseason, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Jameis Winston, and Griffin completing nearly 70% of their passes. Six touchdowns, no turnovers. In fact, the Bucs lead the NFL this preseason with 315 net passing yards. Well, they put, a, they put a lot into Ryan Griffin since he's came over from New Orleans. You know, Dirk Cutter will tell you that he does a lot of things well. Mechanically, he's strong. But to me, he's shown that he's for real. He can play in this league. Now, he doesn't have a snap, a real snap in this league. But given the opportunity, I think they trust him now. And an opportunity for Ronald Jones. Second round pick from USC is thrown down right away. Right, right away, excuse me. Inside the 20-yard line, an excellent defense up front from one of the best defenses in the NFL, no matter who's playing, and the Jacksonville Jacks. The Frontier Communications focus of the game. Frontier Communications don't go it alone. Well, it's the aforementioned Ronald Jones. I mean, he's taken a lot of heat if you follow social media or people want to pontificate, not really knowing what's going on. But he's going to get a quarter of ball tonight and keep an eye on what he's going to be able to do here. Griffin on second down at the 35 by Bernard Reedy and if they spot it on the other side of that they're going to give the first down let's see exactly where they put the ball down and they are going to give him a first down catch excellent touch by Griffin oh, right out of the gate you see the maturation of Ryan Griffin that was a three level throw he could have gone short he could have gone to the intermediate level but he took time had patience enough to find the deep receiver and picked up a quick first down for this Bucks offense. Dirk Cutter called him the best pure passer on this team, and here he is throwing on first down to the sideline. Incomplete. Trying to go to Freddie Martino. You talked about the receiver battle for the additional spots beyond the first four, which are Mike Evans, Deshaun Jackson, Adam Humphreys, and Chris Godwin. Well, it's the deepest position on the team by far. I mean, we know who the, the top four guys, but these bottom roster guys, Freddie Martinez, Justin Watsons, they, they have to shine as well tonight, too. And, Chris, I'm not even going to pretend like this is a running offense. This is a passing offense. What we saw, what we've seen so far in the preseason, I think, confirms that. 
off inside on second down getting up to the 40 yard line is Ronald Jones nice powerful run by Ronald Jones I think the perception of Ronald Jones because he had so many explosive plays at USC that he's this little scat back well go stand next to him I mean, his calves are the size of Vita Vez. I mean the guy is solidly built he can run between the tackles even though they didn't ask him to do a lot of that in college they're going to ask him to do that here in Tampa Bay and Sean Wilson is in at running back on third down and five. Wilson eight carries 27 yards and now he splits out as a receiver to the bottom of your screen. Griffin's throw catch flag down and a first down grab from Bobo Wilson. Seen a lot of spread from this. Buccaneers offense this preseason by spread. I mean nobody in the backfield. Obvious passing situations. It puts outside defense number 56. This penalty is declined. The result of the play. First down. Dante Fowler from Lakewood High, St. Petersburg, the Gator, former Gator, the one offside, but no need to accept the catch good enough for a first down at the 46 of Tampa Bay. Oh, I, to finish that thought, they spread guys out and puts the defense in a bind. You know they're going to have to play some kind of man-to-man, -man, and Ryan Griffin, all he does is pick out his best matchup. Bobo on a, a linebacker or safety down in the box is an easy throw and catch. Another first down, Tampa Bay. Opening drive for the Bucks on the move behind Griffin, who's set to throw again, has time on the pop. Pocket. It collapsed on him. The low throw is incomplete for Anthony Alclair. Reserve tight end. Anthony Alclair is an uh, interesting story, right? He played in Canada. Uh, he, he played at the, the, the Alabama of Canadian college football. And really, he's Laval. He's more of a blocking like tight to, end. I'd like to hear that accent, by the way. <laughs> more of a blocking tight end. But he's shown, I think, this preseason and hasn't seen a lot of... Uh, targets during so far in games but that he can be a receiving option on this team and I think he's pretty solidly entrenched as that third tight end here. On second down Jones misses on one and maybe gets a yard or two attempted tackle by this Jacksonville defense. How many tight ends do you think obviously with O.J. Howard Cameron Brait you're set with those two. I think they'll keep four with Poncho being the fourth really H back. This is a great run by Ronald Jones now. Finding some uh, the ability to miss and to make somebody miss in the backfield, and then just I don't want to say lower your head, but, but be careful <laughs> get, there. getting low. All that though, picking he, up some some positive yardage out yeah, of nothing. Yeah, he did get two yards when it looked like he could lose yardage. So another third down, an extra pressure coming. Griffin's throw almost intercepted, going through the fingertips. What makes rookie free agent from Stanford had a shot. And out comes the punting unit on fourth down. Well, we talk about this Bucks offense, how they're spreading the ball around, throwing it. Well, you have an incompletion or a short gain on first down. You run on second down. You're behind the sticks. You have to throw the football. And Ryan Griffin's just a little late on that throw. And Jacksonville's off. In his seventh year, there's uh, Brian Anger ready to kick to Shane Wynn of the Jacks. And he spun forward across the 25 yard line, an aggressive return before Jack Cicci of the Bucks makes the special teams play. And the Bucks will be on defense. We're going to look at Jacksonville on offense at a scoreless opening quarter. Huh. Temperature in the 70s here in Tampa at Raymond James Stadium. A rain shower moved through to cool things off a little bit earlier. Bucks offense after moving the football stalls and after the 36 yard punt by Anger and a nine yard return. Tim Cook in the backfield for Cody Kessler from the Jacksonville 25. And it is Tim Cook. Gets four yards before he shoved back. Cody Kessler sharp of the preseason so far, completing 80% of his throws. With a touchdown and no interceptions, he was acquired in a trade from Cleveland in the offseason for a conditional seventh-round pick. Well, he had a tough start to his career, didn't he, Chris? I think he went 0-8 in his first start. Most quarterbacks do in Cleveland. <laughs> in Cleveland. But I think they're happy with him. You know, you talk to some of these Jaguar personnel guys, and you know, he's a solid backup, and he'll be the number one behind Blake Borders all season long. Cook carrying short of the 35, free agent from Oregon State, who's battling Brandon Wilds at the running back spot. Jarrell Worthy 
making the defensive play for the Bucks and our Frontier Communications focus of the game on defense. It's got to be Noah Spence. Noah Spence, show us something, anything. This guy's supposed to be the designated pass rusher for this team. They're going to give him an opportunity tonight to prove that, not only on third down, but first and second down. Uh, he didn't play until the 46th snap last week, so I don't know if it was a message or motivation, but he's got to put some good stuff on film for this team. Uh, third down and one, the pile moving forward before being shoved back. Again, it was Tim Cook, three straight runs by the Jags. They did give him the forward progress. It was tough to see with, with the pile of bodies under there, but they mark it at the 36 at a first down. This is the M.O. of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And you look at what they were able to do last year. They were a tough football team, not only running the football, but playing great defense. It's almost a, an anomaly in the NFL to say that anymore with the way they spread out offenses now. But this is a run first offense, and they did it very well last year. Coming out throwing on first down. Near another first down is Cody Kessler to DeAndre Smelter. Yeah, this Jacksonville team under Doug Marone, 10 wins to the AFC Championship game. Uh, quite a rise. And behind the running of Leonard Fournette, TJ Yeldon, Corey Grant, the top three backs that we will not see tonight, but he'll have ready for opening day when they take on the New York Giants. We'll talk about this as the game goes on. I'm sure we'll get some free time, but they have built themselves a heck of a roster to Jacksonville. Wilds on second down, needing a yard. The Bucks stuff him right at the 45-yard line. Cameron Lynch came in and made that hit, and he's a guy that I think might make this football team, especially because they're down at linebacker right now with Kendall Beckwith probably going to non-football injury to start the season. So not only can he help you on special teams, he can play both outside linebacker positions and He's an excitable guy. He plays fast, he plays hard. For a little guy, he plays downhill. Another third and short for Jacksonville. Brandon Wilds runs right through the box and into Tampa Bay territory for a first down. He was frustrated. But he could have had more. The free agent from South Carolina, who has gotten more of the workload in the, in the battle for the fourth running back spot than Tim Cook this preseason. On a couple of short yardage situations, Jacksonville. Old offensive line mentality from Doug Marone as Tim Cook is back in at running back. Jags able to convert just over eight minutes to go in the opening quarter. Kessler gets away and then is thrown down at midfield. Pressure initially and then sacked by Nathan Bazzotta. And it looked like Eric and Zacha got to him first. Yeah, and Zaka unblocked, misses the sack, and then just falls into sack and that's that's good young guy Bazada who's not getting a lot of reps gets a chance to play tonight I don't know where he falls into the pecking order they have so many talented guys up front especially a D tackle nice showing there after a loss of a couple it's Cook running back down to the 47 of Tampa Bay and it'll bring up a third down well, much very similar to the way Jacksonville gave up a couple of First downs to the Bucks offense to start this game. The Bucks get a chance to showcase their third down defense. This is a situation you want to be in if you're Tampa. Third and long, you can play coverage, you can bring pressure. A lot of different things that defensive coordinator Mike Smith can dial up right here. Let's see. Keep an eye on 57. No Spence. Left defense event. See if he can get some pressure here. And the whistle and a flag. Kessler steps back. False start. Offense, number 76. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Will Richardson, rookie from North Carolina State, called for the infraction. <laughs> Noah Spence had him nervous. He was twitching in his stance. Oh, man, it's a shame that that was offside. I think Noah Spence would have beat him on an inside rush move. Instead, we got a third and long here. This is ideal now. If you're the Bucs, you play coverage here. Put everything in front of you. Make the tackle. Get off the field. Need 13 yards for a first down. Kessler is going to dump it off short. Ben Koyak, the tight end from Notre Dame. And it'll be fourth down for Jacksonville. Devontae Harris making the play. Devontae Harris is a guy that they brought in. And again, I know there's a lot of competition at corner on this football team, 
Devontae Harris has come in and been impressive. <laughs> I mean, the guy's been here for just a couple of weeks, and I think he might have a chance to make this football team. Young guy still, only a couple years in the league. Logan Cook is punting, and Wilson waving everybody away as it goes to the sideline. And a good kick inside. See where they spot it. Inside the 10 yard line, the Buccaneer offense takes over. Gerald McCoy will be hearing from him later in the broadcast. We'll chat with him down on the sideline of the Buccaneers preseason network. And this portion of the game brought to you at high definition by Nissan and the Nissan model year end event. Second possession for the Buccaneers. A couple of first downs, the drive stalls. Never too early to become a Bucs fan. <laughs> Stadium renovations continue. And That's so cute. I remember when my girls were that little. <laughs> sweet hope, and caring and hope. thought daddy was the world. Well, they haven't changed. <laughs> hope Claudia, the girls are watching. Ronald Jones, the back. Got first down. Oh, and he smothered. Brought down right away by Dante Fowler. And Dante Fowler suspended for the first game of the season. That's why we're seeing him play tonight. And he has taken advantage of some of these young offensive linemen in the Bucks. And so when you talk about Ronald Jones and him not being able to get started, it's because of plays like this. And I know this is an inside zone. You're supposed to look for a guy, but Alex Kappa completely whiffs. You can't let a free guy go in a zone run offense. And Dante Fowler, a big tackle for loss there. Six yards. Now it's second down. Back to Jones quickly straight ahead, but no room there. And the offensive line, something you addressed in the open, Ronde, because of injury, is just you have guys crisscrossing everywhere. We know these are a lot of reserves, but probably more important because Donovan Smith unlikely to be ready with that knee injury for opening day, the left tackle. Yeah, and we'll see, you know, Leonard Wester, who's been hurt all, all preseason. We'll see Cole Boozer, who's also been hurt. Guys that were, could be competing for that left tackle spot, but they're, they're young up front. You look at Adam Geddes, who's playing guard center, playing center tonight. Kappa's just in the building. Seaton's been fourth in some play, but the continuity's not quite there with these young guys, but have to show a little bit better tonight. And Sean Wilson fights to get more room on third down for the punter. Brian Anger on fourth down. He gets up across the eight-and-a-half, nine-yard line. And here comes Anger. That was just, let's not make any yeah. mistakes down here. Wilson, though, pretty good in pass protection. The... Uh, free agent running back who has shown some ability yeah, he does a lot of things well a little guy but man I tell you what he's smart he's tough his body changed if you read anything about him last year at Duke he changed his body because he knew he had to take some wear and tear yeah but those three runs you just want to get out of the shadow of your end zone give your punter Brian Anger some room to work with here last year a 44 yard gross average for Anger who booms this one Shane Wynn flagged down as he runs back he received that punt at the 40, and he's going to get knocked out at the 37 of Jacksonville. And the special teams play, Devon Redding, running back who was just picked up and added this week. Igwebuke. Also 34s on this roster. Sorry, <laughs> that's just Godwin Igwebuke. <laughs> I didn't catch that. Sorry. It only happens in the preseason. Don't worry. I feel like we're doing a college game with some of the, the double the jury. <laughs> Illegal block in the back. Receiving team, number 43. 10 yard pounded from the end of the kick. Jacksonville keeps the ball. First down. Timeout. Quinton Meeks called for the penalty. That'll back the Jags up. We'll check the Bucks on defense after the offense stalls. Closed captioning brought to you by Kia. Visit KiaDealers.com during Kia's America's Best Summer Clearance. Now I'm trying to figure out where the penalty, how they mark that off. Here you have the ball spotted at the 36-yard line. After a terrific special teams play. 3.49 to go here in the opening quarter and another possession for the Jags. Brandon Wilds, the running back, Cody Kessler. The back up to Borders. We'll see Tanner Lee later. Bumps into his own line, but makes a move outside. Is brought down at the 39-yard line. 
Jack C.G., one of those guys, the rookie from Wisconsin, a year ago torn his ACL, his right knee, hoping to fight his way back and make the roster. Well, he's shown me, Chris, that he can play both inside and outside linebacker. He's starting at middle linebacker today. No Riley Bullock. He hurt himself. He's in a boot all week. Don't know his status, but to me, he's just kept moving up the depth chart. We had him two weeks ago in a game, and I thought he played excellent. Let's show some more of that. In this game. A nice cut from Brandon Wilds who gets up across midfield and picks up the first down. Patrick O'Connor, Eastern Michigan, one of those guys fighting for a roster spot ended up making the tackle. Well, you're looking for gap control defense right here, and it only takes one guy there, Drill Worthy, who wasn't able to control his gap there and just gashed him. You know, this Bucks defense has been struggling all year, preseason, I should say, to not give up some of these gash runs and kept another one there. Kessler after a pickup of 11 completes and inside the 40 DeAndre Smelter free agent receiver from Georgia Tech of course receiver a position with Marquise Lee his injury and out for the season. Jags looking for all the help they can get here. Well, this is uh, just an oppor opportunity to get a ball out quick. Defense is way off. I think your corner there was expecting underneath help from Javion Ellett who's a little bit late. Easy throw and catch. First down inside the 40 at Tampa Bay. Wilds gets down to the 35. Cameron Lynch making the tackle. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of Cameron Lynch. I mean, the guy just he plays so fast. I think he's a really good reader of the, the game. You know, he understands what they're trying to throw at him. He can read through play action. He can understand what quarterback running back combination is trying to give him. And, He'll make a lot of tackles playing a whole game tonight. Best offensive threat of the game so far. A minute 45 remaining in the opening quarter from either team. And pounding away with Wilds. Knocked down at the 34-yard line. This is going to be a game where, you know, obviously Doug Marone, the new the offensive coordinator, Nate Hackett, all they're going to do is try to run this football. And they have an identity on this team. We mentioned it earlier. Pound you, pound you, pound you. Beat you in a submission, and if you're the Bucks defense, you have to know that. Especially preseason four, you want this game to move along. You're gonna have to buckle up and get ready to play some smash mouth ball here. See how well Jacksonville has run the ball so far on third and five. Kessler likely to pass. The Bucks send extra pressure. He's got a moment. Sideline one on one, and almost. A one-handed grab by Smelter. Amari Coleman on the coverage, and it'll be fourth down. Good coverage by Amari Coleman there. You know, they got eight guys in the box. They're going to bring some pressure. Quarterback has a decision. Which guy do I want to take a shot at? He went at Coleman. Coverage was perfect. Long incompletion sends out the field goal unit. Josh Lambeau to try a 51-yard field goal. He's 0 for 1, 50 plus this preseason. The kick is up. And nailed it. 3 0 Jags. Josh Lambeau puts Jacksonville on top with 52 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Wonder if these stick carriers are here. I know they'll be uh, in New Orleans for the opener a week from Sunday on the Bucks and Saints tag. Oh, hey, wake up to the morning news on your side. News Channel 8 today. Marco and Gail bring you breaking news. Lee and Meredith, keep your day on track with weather and traffic on the 8s. Always on your side. Weekdays beginning at 4.30 in the morning. It's 4.30 a.m. Cook, that's early. Ready to kick off to Bobo Wilson following the field goal. Special teams. Another area, players can save a roster spot, earn a job, or practice squad spot. Here comes Wilson. Spins out of the tackle and short of the 20-yard line where the offense will take over. And that scoring drive by Jacksonville, the first of the game. Brought to you by Florida Blue. Icon of Blue. To learn more, go to floridablue.com. A little bend don't break for the Bucks defense so far tonight. They've given up plenty of yardage through the 20s, but they found a way to buckle down when they've gotten down into the scoring area and force a punt. Now field goal, and now Ryan Griffin. They've only had two rush yards on six carries. 
Ronald Jones goes to the bottom of your screen. There was a receiver, Ronda, and something I know that they said he's improving at. The other way is Griffin for a catch across the 28. That's Bernard Reedy. Like I said, you, offensive coordinators love this. Spread out the uh, defense. Make them get in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and then just pick the guy that you think is better than the guy on the other side of the defense. Ryan Griffin's done that at least three times so far tonight. And he knows this offense to hurry up to the line. Jones carries and gets up near the 30-yard line. And I think we're going to see a different offensive approach this year with the aerial attack a lot more. And yes, Peyton Barber is reliable on the ground, but you got to take advantage. How can you not? So many weapons on offense. You, you don't want to keep any of those guys off the field. See if they get the snap off if Griffin wants to let the clock run down, and he does. So that's the end of the first quarter on the Hyundai scoreboard. The Jags lead 3-0 over the Bucks. It's the Hyundai Epic Summer Sales Event, and it's going on now with Rondé Barber, Dan Lucas on the field, I'm Chris Myers. We're glad you're watching the Jags and Bucks. Start of the second quarter, Bucks have the football trailing 3-0. From their own 30 yard line on second down eight Ryan Griffin who has started and the Bucks will keep three quarterbacks throughout the entire season Winston of course suspended for the first three so Griffin will back up Ryan Fitzpatrick in here completing Bernard Reedy's third catch of the game and gets up near another first down quick look at the first quarter statistics brought to you by Publix where shopping is a pleasure well they haven't been able to do anything running the football How about stopping the run <laughs> stopping the run either but again, we, we can harp on how well this team is passing the football all day, and I, I think it's a credit to this offense that they're able to find something else. This, you can't bang your head on the wall all day long. Find your best options outside. Throw some pass. Your quarterbacks have been excellent this preseason. Yeah, no turnovers from the top three quarterbacks. And there to Bobo Wilson. Griffin delivers again. First down in Jacksonville territory. Now, Todd Munkin calling the plays during the preseason, the offensive coordinator. And... Dirk Cutter will call the plays once the regular season starts. The head coach who made his name by calling plays, but Munkin wanted a chance to do this. He helps put the game plan together. They all work on this together on offense. I think it's mutually beneficial for both of those guys. Griffin with time overthrows, and he had Justin Watson with double coverage. Well, you, you talk to Dirk Cutter, and of course he's a play caller. That's what he's always done. He was a play caller here in Jacksonville. Obviously his big success in Atlanta working with Matt Ryan, and you know, it was a challenge his first couple of years with Jameis Winston. I mean, the guy was careless and reckless with the ball at times, and I think from preseason, it looks like he's corrected that. He's taken that next step to being, being a, a better pro, but this offense so far this preseason has showcased the ability to move the ball through the air over and over and over again. And, and I got to think that this is going to be a pass first offense. Set, use that to set up a run game. Jones in a running back and passing again. There is Justin Watson, the rookie from Penn. And James Winston, would you say he's had, Dirk Cutter said he asked him to lead from behind this training camp given the situation. Would you say that Winston has had the maybe one of the best training camps you've seen? Uh, by far. Without not, a doubt. Not, they not said he's close. been throwing the ball the best. Hey, Vince Carter. And it was a practice the other day. He's, uh, he's at the game, too. He, he's not working. Looks like he can still play. He, he can still play. He's 22 <laughs> years in for the Hawks. He's still going. But, yeah, I think Jameis has had an excellent preseason. Finding targets and just being smart. Mentioned it you know, I think numerous times uh, as they pick up a first down here on third down run. Uh, just how protective of the ball they've all been. No interceptions, really only a couple of balls in harm's way so far. And it's encouraging. It, you go into this season with Jameis being down three games. Ryan Fitzpatrick is your starting quarterback. Ryan Griffin, a snap away from being in the football game. So you need to develop these guys, and we mentioned it in the open. I think they've done an excellent job getting all three of these guys ready. On uh, first down, Bobo Wilson, receiver running, and toward another first down, the sideline he goes. Well, I got to tell you, you're looking for that fifth 
possibly sixth receiver spot. I think they're going to keep two of these guys. These guys are showcasing it tonight. How confident does Bobo Wilson look with the ball in his hand, catching the ball? Justin Watson, we just saw him with that reception. And this is a play every team has in their playbook. Little misdirection, short motion to receiver, and give him the ball and let his athletic talent take over. Nice big game for the Bucks offense to get them into the scoring area. A pickup of 21 yards. Jones in the backfield from the 16 of Jacksonville. Best offensive threat from the Bucks. There goes Jones as a receiver. Bottom of your screen. Empty backfield for Griffin. And we got a whistle. I was... Before the snap, timeout Tampa Bay. They're first. You know, you see all this empty, and I think a lot of times you're just trying to get matchups. They had one there, but timeout, Bucks. Let's see what they got when they come back from this break. Bucks fans, Storm Team 8 has your game day forecast covered with Max Defender 8. Trust the radar built for Tampa Bay weather. Max Defender 8, always on your side. Well, if Vince Carter from Daytona Beach at age 41 can get a contract, Ronnie, I'm going to talk to Mike <laughs> Mike Greenberg here with the Bucks. See if we can sign you up. Uh, get happy, you, it's happy, a good deal. Happy birthday, by the way, Mike. Mike Greenberg. Green, yes, the money man. We got, he's got, we're trying to re-sign some guys. We'll discuss that coming up. Is Griffin sideline throw and the catch again it's Bobo Wilson this has been his drive well I don't think any of those three receivers that we talked about Freddie Martino Justin Watson that Bobo Wilson probably need the needed the best final week he was hurt for that week I think got a little bit behind just because of the way those other guys played I mean they really showcase what they were about and when you're hurt you just fall behind in the pecking order but so far tonight who's shown up for us the pitch to Ronald Jones. Trying to turn the corner. Or he's run out of bounds. Back to Wilson. You know, Florida State undrafted. He had four catches in the preseason opener against the Dolphins. Remember last year he spent most of the season on the practice squad. He was promoted to the active roster in the final three games. Yeah, I think his odds were short to begin with. And then they got even shorter when he got hurt. But he's competitive. He's a really good receiver. I, I love his attitude. He was showcased in hard knocks last year. I think we all remember that. Uh, but he's and giving himself a chance tonight. It's Ronald Jones. Can he get the first down on third and short? Looks like he's a little bit short. And I think they're going to go for this. I hope they go for it. Why not? Fourth preseason game. You know, you're working with a bunch of young guys in there at offensive line. You want to find out about them. You want to find out what their attitude is. A little bit of stress now. Fourth and, what, half a yard or whatever. If you can get it into yourself, Adam Geddes up there, Leonard Wester, these guys up front, Kappa, Alex Kappa, get a little push, get a first down here, keep this drop going. Griffin to throw on fourth and a half a yard. Completion and a first down. Alan Cross. Or you can do that. <laughs> the aggressive play calling of the Munkin Cutter combo. Or you can uh, pretend like you're going to get an eye formation, reduce the formation, and then just a little play action, reverse pivot to the fullback. Alan Cross, who we found out earlier in the preseason, has great hands, was a great receiver in college, which we didn't know. Showcasing that again, first down inside the five. This is <laughs> well, we knew we just didn't tell we everybody. Telling, we, I didn't at know. Memphis, you was, may have known. I didn't the, know. It was in the research, but uh, I love that guy. It's the little things in the fourth preseason game you get excited about on fourth and one a throw as Jones powers forward. And it will bring up second and goal. We've talked all preseason, even in the last year, about this team in the red zone. They struggled so much mightily, just execution-wise. Killing themselves really in the red zone. I think this preseason we've shown both the ability to throw the ball in the end zone, but also run it. I think good teams run it when they get down into the red zone. It's the ultimate attitude position when you're inside the five yard line. Turn around, hand it off, power yourself into the end zone. Jones had a touchdown run at his first preseason game against the Dolphins. Touchdown on the throw from Griffin to Justin Watson. Well, great drive by the Bucks here, and it all starts with the arm of Ryan Griffin. This was a run play. You'll see the offensive lineman fire out, but he sees the one-on-one -on -one matchup outside. Justin Watson is 
way bigger in the Jags corner Jalen Myrick there so why not give him an opportunity touchdown Bucks great drive Myrick battling for that sixth corner spot along with seven other players for Jacksonville Chandler Catanzaro who's missed a couple extra points this preseason nails that one and there's different reasons for that They're trying a new long snapper tonight as well and that was Garrison Sanborn on the snap. The touchdown to Watson. That's the sister of art director Greg Hartog, Karen, so pays to know people in, in the TV industry. Hey, raise the flags this season at the home opener against the Eagles on Sunday, September 16th here at Raymond James Stadium. All the fans that attend will get a Bucks hat. Presented by Raymond James. Get your tickets tonight at Buccaneers.com slash tickets. The home opener. Jalen Myrick back to receive Ken Charles kick. After the Bucks, Brian Griffin throws his fourth touchdown pass of this preseason. He'll be backing up Ryan Fitzpatrick in the first three games of the regular season. Into the end zone. He's coming out. Myrick straight ahead. 26 27 yard line. Let's take a look at that Florida Blues scoring drive that it was impressive almost six and a half minutes. And Griffin the cool hand and I like what uh, Dirk Cutter said about Brian Griffin that he works so well with young receivers he did with Watson and they, obviously when Ronald Jones the running back was put out as a receiver for a young quarterback who's never played a, yeah. a regular season snap. We, we say he's young. He's 28 years old. He's been out of college for six years. I mean, you could have argued last year when he, before he got hurt, but he was battling then for the backup quarterback position. He's himself this year. He looks great. Tim Cook across the 31-yard line, and when I asked Dirk Cutter if he had any doubt, should he be pressed in to play in the regular season? He said, no, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. I, I think he can handle whatever we throw at him. Yeah, he was quick to say no. <laughs> no, he, he can go. Uh, you, just, you know, young guys, you get, you find yourself behind talented players. He was behind Drew Brees in New Orleans. Comes here, he's behind Jameis Winston, whoever the backup quarterback has been, Ryan Fitzpatrick. You just don't get the opportunity. Throw from Kessler incomplete. But, but it is amazing that you go this long into your career and don't have a pro snap and you're still on a roster. That, that says a lot about him. And here's Noah Spence. Easy pressure. Just get upfield. Force the pocket to move. Get in completion. Sets up a third and about seven for this Bucks defense. And he's showing a little bit. Second round pick. 2016. Third and six. Kessler. From the Jacksonville 31 yard line. Extra pressure is picked up and he's got an open receiver. Knocked backwards short of the first down, right at the 35 yard line. And the hit, Isaiah Johnson, to make sure the receiver did not gain any more, and it's fourth down. That was a good tackle there. Isaiah Johnson is a guy now. He's probably very similar to Keith Tandy. I, I think he's trying to fill that role. And I, I, Keith probably is safe on this roster. He would have to have a great game, I think, to beat him out. But Isaiah Johnson has shown some really good tape here the past two games. He's got an opportunity to play. Sean Wilson waiting for the punt. Fair catch called for right at the 20-yard line. Bucks offense will take over after the last time they had the football. They marched in for a touchdown. Want to say hi to all the Buck fans joining us on News Channel 8's coverage of the Bucks and the Buccaneers preseason network in Orlando on Fox 35, Fox 51 in Ocala, Gainesville, Fox 4 in Southwest Florida, Fox 49 in Tallahassee, News 13 in Panama City, News 5 in Mobile and WZDX in Huntsville. A lot of people talk about the meaninglessness of this game. I, I thought it was interesting when you talk to people in the building because these guys are having to play the whole game. 53 guys on Sunday, only 46 get to play. You need to find out about guys' conditioning. So if any of these young guys are going to be able to play in a regular season game, this is this is their last best test to see if they're able to do that. And don't discount that aspect of this last preseason game. Dario Gumbawale, who was added 
and battling for a running back spot with Sean Wilson the free agent from Duke we should mention that Charles Sims who was injured has been released by the Buccaneers. Griffin to throw and across the 27 fighting for a first down. Anthony Alclair wouldn't give up and it is a Buccaneer first down. Alclair is a big man big target 6 6 60. Oh. Effortlessly this ball comes out of his hands. And then the big run after catch after breaking a tackle. Nice job. Pickup of 12. At the Tampa Bay 34 yard line. Incomplete. Bobo Wilson, the target. Let's head down to the field to Dan Lucas, who's with Gerald McCoy. All right, thank you, guys. Gerald, uh, your defense tonight is getting a chance to, to face a good run, running attack. Uh, Jacksonville's uh, running the ball a lot. How's, how are you guys looking tonight? Um, well, we're doing, you know, fairly decent so far. Uh, we, one thing uh, our coaches are preaching is to uh, knock the line back, and we've been able to do that. We just got to get off and make the tackle, you know. But we are uh, be, definitely being aggressive up front for sure. Before camp started, you know, we said, hey, you got all the tools now, Gerald. And you said, no, 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 we got a long way to go here. We haven't even started camp yet. Well, camp is over. Where do you think this defensive line stands heading into opening day? Uh, I think we're trending up, and uh, we did a great job with putting in a lot of work. Uh, that was a lot of rough days. Uh, you know, our coach, uh, Coach Brinson Buckner, one of the best I've ever been around, and uh, he didn't take it easy on us at all because he knows, you know, if you're going to have a championship team, you got to have a dominant defense. Um, but definitely trending up going into opening week. Once the game started, did you kind of look around at the guys next to you, you know, Jason and Bo and Vinny and those guys go, you know what, these guys are pretty good collectively. I think we can uh, really get this going here. Yeah, definitely. Um, just day in and day out seeing those guys compete at practice. Um, and then, uh, you know, watching the carry over to the game. It's always fun, man, when, uh, you know, Coach tell you just do your job and play your play, you know, beat the man in front of you. So in your attempt to do that every play, you don't see who's making the play until afterwards. Where it's great when you look up and it's a bunch of plays being made by the D-line. It's always fun. Has it been noticeably different for you personally having those guys around you? Have you noticed a couple of plays here and there that you've been free? Uh, well, what I'll say is... Uh, Here's what people expect, okay? And I'm going a, I'm to a kill this right now. People expect that I'm not going to get double teamed as much. I've been getting double teamed more than I was in the past uh, simply because of what the coaches have asked me to do. However, the difference is when I'm getting double teamed, we got guys that when they are getting one-on-ones, they're winning them. And then when it allows me to get my one-on-one, -on -one, if I'm uh, able to make the quarterback step up or pressure him, then these guys can come off and make the play. And that's the best part about it. It's not about not getting double teamed. It's about having guys that can win one-on-ones. Gerald, thank you so much. We'll see you in New Orleans. All right, see you there. All right, guys. An impressive drive here by Griffin and a penalty tacked on after the catch. Well, that was the helmet rule if you were paying attention behind Gerald. And I thought Gerald made some great points uh, in that. I'll, we'll get back to that when the, when the Bucks get on defense. but. Now this drive, it's, it's more the same. It's more Ryan Griffin. It's more receivers stepping up. Bernard Reedy is a forgotten guy in this competition, and he's having a great drive here. Sean Wilson with a catch, and, and they've been fighting for extra yardage, whether it's been Reedy or Wilson or Watson. And back in the red zone at the 14-yard line. Well, I'm always, always uh, impressed with preseason four when you get these young guys because to me this game is about coaching that this last preseason game is about coaching it's obviously not about the players these guys aren't going to be starters in the NFL uh, next week but does your message as a coach does it translate to the bottom of the roster because the bottom of the roster really Chris is where the meat of your team is the guys that go unheralded but really are the ones that win football games for and, you. and at least in the Buccaneers case in the last three years they've used 41 players yes. from their practice squad that's an average of 15 per season that have come up and played during the course and been on the active roster and, and, and it's easy to evaluate a Gerald McCoy it's easy to evaluate Quan Alexander and Jameis Winston and you know Mike Evans being able to evaluate these guys guys that you almost take a flyer on sometimes free agents bottom of the roster could have, or bottom of the draft could have been free agents
to hit on those guys and have that many guys play on your football team, that's outstanding by the, the scouting department, general manager, and those guys. Throw is behind Sean Wilson, and Sean Wilson is somebody, Jason Light, the Bucks general manager, will join us in the second half of this game, and we'll ask him about signing a guy, a free agent out of Duke like that, who's, in your opinion, he's made this team, would a you say? Absolutely. That's and, the fourth running and back. That's, and that's that's the hardest part. I mean, you can't peel back the underbelly of what goes on uh, in these in these scouting meetings with Mike Beal, director of college scouting, John Spitek, player personnel guys, what they have to do to identify this guy. That, that's a lot of extra work because you just don't really know. Nobody's valued a Sean Wilson as high as some other people. He comes in here and shows that he can be, be a player. Griffin uh, incomplete. There were three Jag defenders. Somehow the ball got through, but Irvin Phillips couldn't hold it. Free agent from Syracuse who's fighting for a roster spot or possibly 53 on the active roster. And we know the cut is Saturday. There's 10 on the on the practice squad. Although you have to be the right age and right amount of service. So now a field goal try and we'll see if Garrison Sanborn who played in all the games last year by the Bucks, is actually competing with Drew Ferris for the long snapper position and he is in there from Jesuit High School the Tampa native and from Florida State they're comfortable with him he's, he's been here they know and I think last week they had a low snap that they would say contributed to Captain Zaro's missed uh, extra point I mean I went into this thing and it wasn't a competition just to give the guy a look but when you talk to these guys they said this is it's still open he's fighting for a job both of those guys snap kick and good from 31 yards away now seven out of eight field goals this preseason for that man and the Bucks have expanded their lead over Jacksonville. Get your afternoon news at a time just right for you with first at four. Josh Benson, Stacy Scheibel always on your side weekdays at four on News Channel 8. A brisk moving first half with Rondé Barber, Chris Myers and Catanzaro with the field goal getting ready to kick off another area that the Buccaneers have secured the place kicking position after the adventures the last few seasons hoping he's the answer adventures that's and, what you're calling yeah. it now <laughs> well whatever <laughs> and another his kickoffs have been terrific too this one no chance back of the end zone out to the 25 Jacksonville and office take a look at the Florida Blue scoring drive and Griffin on that in this game 14 out of 21 124 yards and a touchdown but some key passes with the penalty to set up the field goal he's look good again <laughs> it's not a surprise now it's like if, if you see it once it's kind of an anomaly you see it twice like oh maybe you, you see it now four times in a row in the preseason and you got to say that look this guy's back from his soldier, shoulder injury that he suffered last preseason thought he had a great offseason everybody said so and he's been really really good so far in his opportunities <laughs> see, four games this year. see what uh, Tanner Lee can do as he hands off to Brandon Wilds gets up to the 29 Tanner Lee coming in for Cody Kessler six round draft pick from Nebraska in the preseason limited play four out of eight but started for two late in his hometown of New Orleans back in 2014 and 15 but finished his college career at Nebraska and most teams as you said a trend of keeping three quarterbacks we'll see what Jacksonville decides to do behind Bortles and Kessler catch made across the 37 yard line he's got a good arm I know when he went to Nebraska after being at Tulane they were really excited with me played a pro style offense at Nebraska and so he understands the concepts he's not one of those read option teams that hand and fake into the running back all the time he can be a drop back guy and I know they were excited to, to add him to this roster see if he has enough to stick here completing the pass to Alan Lazard and then the run to Wilds Tanner Lee is six foot four Jacksonville will have all three of its timeouts and the two minute warning depending on how Doug Marone wants to play this from the 38 of Jacksonville. Pressure, pass low and almost hauled in by Doran Miller but he couldn't hang on. 
go back real quick to some of those comments that Gerald Gerald made. I've always found him to be insightful when you get him in a get him in a situation where he can just pontificate. You know, Gerald likes to talk. We, we, yes, all, know we, that. Yes. we all know that. But I thought he made some really good points about the, the double teams, and he's still going to get double teamed. Whenever you go talk to some of these other coaches, you do it during regular season. The first person they bring up when they talk about Tampa Bay is Gerald McCoy on defense. So as much as we want to say JPP and Vinnie Curry are going to help him, it's going to, probably going to be the other way around. He's going to help them get more one-on-one -on -one situations and more opportunities to get to the back. And Tanner Lee on a third and eight with a completion to Alan Lazar, the rookie free agent from Iowa State. And that should, unless they can hustle to the line, take us to the two-minute warning. And we have reached the two-minute warning. Buccaneers have the lead. The Jags are on the move. There's Gerald McCoy who said, what do you mean you're talking too much? <laughs> he's talking. He's, he's talking. Roster cuts coming on Saturday, so 40 jobs on the line. Players battling for a roster spot or a chance maybe to be on the practice squad. And in this first half, Somebody who doesn't have to worry about a job. <laughs> a lot of guys that don't have to worry about a job. Brandon Wilds. After the two-minute warning, all three timeouts, Jacksonville. Tanner Lee on the move. Slipped and tripped up. Slipping through the grasp of Devontae Lambert, but enough to slow him down. Good two-minute chance for the Bucks defense here. All you want to do is hold them to, the, to a field goal. Don't give up the big play down the football field. He picked up four. Like a, might have been an offside, but no flag, no whistle on the snap. I don't know if the movement by Jack Cicci before he got to the line bothered the center for Jacksonville. I think it bothered the quarterback. He, I think he was assuming that that was going to be an encroachment penalty. But the defender stopped before the ball and no flag. Loss Jack, of six. Yeah, Jack Cicci with the layup sack. He loved those. <laughs> I used to love those. Nobody blocks you. Everybody else is playing perfect. Five-man rush. Tanner Lee has time and has the catch. What a throw and what a grab going to the sideline by Shane Wynn. Oh, this is exactly what you don't and Did he hold happen. on, though? Let's see. They're saying they're bob bobbling it, yeah. It was ruled a catch immediately. Right here. And as he continued... The process of the catch, well think, out of bounds. I think they got it right. That was close. That was close. Should we take another look at that? We're, we're going to get a replay up top. It's incomplete, so they should review it from the booth up here, from the officials' booth up here. But apparently not. He hit the ground and slid. You can see the official first ruled catch. He only needs any body part. If this is, if he's controlling the football there, and it looks uh, like he's he down. is, he's down. That should be. A catch. And it looked like, yeah, the deeper official changed what was initially ruled by the, I guess we call it the, the official closer to the line of scrimmage. About the receiver coach here in Jacksonville's Keenan McCardell familiar to Buck fans yeah, very familiar he's worked with some some guys in college so he's had a good track record as a coach and he's shaking his head he's that's a catch I agree with you Keenan but I'm glad it's incomplete sorry buddy your, your bucket here bloodlines yeah, so fourth down after all that and a high punt Wilson lets it go it bounces and the Jags will down it Inside the 10 yard line later in the game, you'll have a chance to vote for the Pro Balance Protein Water Player of the Game. Go to WFLA's Facebook page and we'll announce the candidates brought to you by Pro Balance Protein Water, not just another sports drink. You and I got to have a little bit of the coconut yeah. water, the, the, uh, the raspberry, 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 blueberry, blue, blue raspberry. All good. Yeah. Hey, I saw, uh, I saw uh, Jalen Ramsey, of course, inactive. Over on the Jags sideline, and as uh, you who played the position a long time have the numbers, and one day you'll be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, he talks like one. <laughs> For his comments, I want to ask you about what he was quoted as saying and didn't back off about his honest opinion of quarterbacks around the league. Some complimentary, <laughs> calling some trash. 
very candid, very open. Griffin comes out throwing here. And a catch made at the 15. Oh, he's got the cred to back it up. Him and A.J. Boyer are probably the best. He's duo. only in his third year. Yeah, coming. Him, him and A.J. Boyer are probably the best cornerback duo in football right now. They are so, so good. And obviously, if you want him not to talk, you got to go out and beat him. His confidence is off the charts. I can't wait to do football games with him just, uh, you know, because of that swag. I mean, he's good for football, I think. Buccaneers on the catch will call a timeout. So it's okay to be that that honest. You would never do that. Well, let me, you would let, never let, say let me that. put it to you this way. I'd probably thought that about a lot of guys. I would never tell anybody publicly about that. I, John Lynch used to joke with me all the time. because be, We'd be in meetings and we'd be talking about this guy, receiver, or quarterback. And I would and be yeah, that guy stinks. And, 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 and really, really, what you're trying to do, this is the way I looked at it. What, what I was trying to do, especially a guy who was really good player, you're just fine, trying to find a way to identify a weakness in his game because you go up against a, a Peyton Manning, for instance, and he's such a such a good player. J Drew Brees, he's such a good player. You got to find something, and if you can tell yourself in your mind that hey, this guy isn't as good as everybody thinks he is, it gives you personally a little bit of advantage. And he's just taking it to the extreme. <laughs> And here comes a flag on a deep throw. Yeah, and I'd worry, too, about motivating uh, a quarterback who, who may be not a superstar, but one who says, this is my chance to shut this guy up. Yeah. But if he can back it up, he went to the championship game, where the Jags did. Pass interference. Defense, number 43. Spot the contact. Automatic. First down. Oh, Quentin Meeks was called on uh, the infraction against Irvin Phillips, who's trying to get downfield. Well, let me tell you what. His, his job is significantly easier at corner because of what he has up front. And also because of Boye on the other corner, yeah, right? That is two good safeties. You got uh, Yannick Ngagwe at one defensive end, Calais Campbell at another. This team is stacked on defense. Both of their linebackers are outstanding football players, Telvin Smith and Miles Jackson. There's a reason they're good. It has nothing to do with the scheme. It has to do with the players on that, that roster. And when you have success, I mean, grant yourself the ability to say what you want to. And Nick DeLuca almost had an interception on an underthrow from Griffin, who, again, uh, the top three quarterbacks, Fitzpatrick and Winston and, and Griffin, as much as they've put the ball up this preseason, they have not turned the ball over. Well, that was the, the first real bad pass that we've seen, bad decision that we've seen from Ryan Griffin tonight. It's interesting that they're trying to move this ball down the field and get themselves in the field goal range, possibly for a long field goal attempt by Catanzaro. Griffin has time underneath alone is Sean Wilson. And they're going to have to call timeout quickly as he gets to midfield with a first down. Sean Wilson, I, you know, he was slow starting with the hip pointer in the first preseason game or the hip problem, but uh, everything that the Bucks said that they saw that they liked about him, he has shown on the field for Dirk Cutter. Well, he can be a change of pace guy. He can obviously contribute in special teams. He's just, he's so quick. He has great leverage as a runner. He's just really explosive. You get him in space and he's dangerous. I mean, you don't have that dynamic. I know Ronald Jones is a, uh, has that kind of reputation as being that guy, but this guy may be even quicker and faster than him. Honorable mention all ACC is an all-purpose back in 2017. He surpassed 2,000 career rushing yards for Duke. And yeah, never more than, I think, 800 or so. It just shows his versatility. Did it all, he was an all-everything guy there. But they valued him very highly, and I think the Bucks are seeing why they liked him so much in college. Out of timeouts, Griffin for the sideline and incomplete. Down to four seconds. Touchdown pass from Griffin to Justin Watson and a Catanzaro field goal. Jacksonville with a Josh Lambeau field goal, and that's the scoring in the game so far. And as Dirk Cutter said, this is the most talented team he's had since he's been here in Tampa Bay. It's going into his third season as the head coach. Well, it's, you have to say there's good players on this football team that aren't going to make the cut. Guys that could play for this football team. How often have you been able to say that in the past four or five years? Airing it out for the end zone, a Hail Mary, and no answer. It's the end of the first half. The touchdown pass that Griffin threw, the only touchdown of this first half. Otherwise, field goals for each of the teams. And a 10-3 Buccaneer advantage. Bucks trying to win their third preseason game.
Something they haven't done back since Gruden was coaching in 2008. Let's head down to the field and Dan Lucas. Thank you, Chris. Coach uh, Ryan Griffin, the body of work, not just tonight, but the entire preseason. You said, listen, he's been in our system. What has he shown you these past four weeks, including tonight? Yeah, well, really good timing and Chris best execution. He's running the show well, and we're really confident if if something happens that we need him as a as a backup, he'll be ready to go. 14 play drive there. Uh, in this receiver battle, I mean, to the naked eye, everybody had a chance to contribute. Does this make it tough decisions for you? Well, I hope Jason's paying attention upstairs. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. All right, guys. Referring to Jason Light, the general manager, who will join Ronde and I in the booth here in the second half. But not that he's going to sort out the roster right away, <laughs> but he may have some answers. Tell us how they found some of these players. Halftime show coming up. Bucks lead it here at Raymond James. the country and around the world right they barber Chris Myers as we welcome you inside to the final preseason game of 2018 I'm looking at the run pass numbers 27 pass attempts 14 run attempts I, I don't care whether it's first second or third string out there Ronde. this is the wave of uh, this Buccaneer team going forward at least in the season ahead well, this is Todd Munkin's way that's for sure <laughs> he's got free reign and I think he loves what his quarterbacks have been able to do but most importantly Chris I think he really likes what his receivers are showing I mean we're, we're talking about guys that are gonna be five six practice squad guys uh, on this on this unit out here just balling playing well doing everything that they have asked them to do Justin Watson to me I thought he started camp really slow Chris he had some drops he didn't look the part but these last three weeks he's really come into his own I'd be shocked if this guy isn't the fifth receiver on this football team and we all know that he is a hard worker work on special teams and expect a lot of big things. He has the prototype. He looks like an NFL receiver to me. Another booming kick from Kevin Zaro. Don't forget Bar 76, the new premium sports bar restaurant. It's here in the East Club Atrium as they continue the renovations here at Raymond James, the fourth phase. And coming soon for the season home opener, Buccaneer Beach. Uh, down at the end, they'll have an outdoor beach-themed area at the South Plaza entrance. You can hang out and... Feel like you're at the beach and at an NFL game all at the same time. Fans getting ready for the regular season a week from Sunday. And a lot of additions to this stadium improvements. West side, now east side, outside. Super Bowl will be here in yep. 2021. After Atlanta and South Florida, Miami, as Brandon Wilds carries to start the second half for Jacksonville. Cody Kessler played most of the first half at quarterback, and then Tanner Lee taking over. And Wilds and Tim Cook have run well against this Bucks defense, just haven't been able to get close to the end zone. Uh, I think that's a credit to what the Bucks have done once they've gotten down into the red zone or the, the near red inside the 30 and 40 yard line. They've really buckled down, played some <laughs> tough defense. You've seen Mike Smith, defense coordinator, bring some pressure and stood up when they've had to. That's all you can ask for these young guys. Tanner Lee, sideline. Oh, he got his fingertips on it. His feet are in, ruled a catch. Monte Crockett. And there was an earlier play where Jacksonville had a catch that was waved off, but this one is good by Crockett. And Marco Myers here playing corner. Just he lost that battle at the line of scrimmage. He was out of phase from the very beginning. And that was an excellent throw and catch down that sideline. And we just talked about them being in this situation. High red, right outside the red zone, 12 yards till they get to the 20. See if this defense is able to step up right now. Good looking touch throw from Lee. And every receiver is, uh, every receiver catch for Jacksonville is a big one given their situation as Wilds carries. Yeah, it'll be interesting. You know, week one, no Marquise Lee. It's, it's you, know, you read the press clippings, it's all by committee. Keelan Cole, Dede Westbrook. Dante Moncrief, who they went out and got from Jacksonville on a one-year prove-it deal. Uh, and then they got they got their rookie, DJ Shark, who we, we didn't see, but I think he's had a good preseason as well. So, I mean, I think they can survive it. They're really a run-oriented team anyways. And 
these guys can be possession guys. This team can get back to where they are. They're going to win all defense. Yeah, and for all the heat that Blake Bortles took, the guy won a couple of playoff yes, games. Did. Was a win away from the Super Bowl with this Jacksonville team. Tanner Lee, that same kind of throw, and tripped up. No flag. Marco Myers again on Monte Crockett. They're the same two that we saw a moment ago when Crockett won out. I think they like that matchup. I think they think Crockett can outrun Myers over there. Whenever he's in bump coverage on the line of scrimmage, he's got to expect that they're going to take him down. down. It's twice in a row. And I know that was incidental contact, but I got to tell you what, Chris, when I used to be in that situation, they would call that. I would try, I would purposely try <laughs> oh, you would to get like into their legs like and make it look incidental. So good job, Marco. All right. Well, the disguise, Marco Myers from Orlando, Florida, played at Southeastern. No relation. No relation. So he makes a big play. I don't want to hang out with him. Slide by Tanner Lee. Let's see where that is in terms of first down yardage. He picked up enough to get it. And keep the change moving for Jacksonville. You come out of halftime, you never expect or want a slow start on defense. And a couple of big plays, big run to start, big pass to get them down here. And, and now the Bucks have to stand up. Look for somebody on this defense. If you want to make an impression, right, you get down into the red zone, somebody on this defense, if you want to stand out to your coaches, make a play right now. From the 18 of the Bucks, it's Tim Cook. Gets a block and Myers got him by the ankles and wouldn't let go. That was a good tackle. You know, Mike Smith's defense, the corners are going to be asked to make plays just like this. And, you know, a lot of offensive coordinators do this. They, they, they crack down, crack down, put the corner in a one on one situation and ask that question of that corner. Are you willing? Stand in there and put your face on somebody and make a tough tackle. And Marco Myers did a good job there. And, uh, but more to work with for Mike Smith on this defense with the additions of MJ Stewart and Carlton Davis, the rookie. We'll talk more of the rookie defensive backs drafted. As Lee, as time of the pocket off the hands and almost intercepted. Alan Lazard was the Jacksonville intended receiver. We'll be talking to Jason White a little bit about all the draft picks and how well the Bucks did in that area. You think all of those will make this roster the entire... Put it this way, I, I don't know, but I'd be shocked. This ball right here, Chris, this thing, look how long this stays in the air. Oh, my God. It's like... In slow motion. It's, it's like, it's like a, that cake on the... Mom puts a cake on the kitchen counter, and you're like, should I go grab it? Yes, just go take it. Tips and overthrows. Bucks a plus one in the giveaway takeaway area of this preseason. Lee underneath. And two bucks there. Ankle tackle again by Marco Myers. Outside the 11 is Scott Orndoff, one of the reserve tight ends, made the grab. And let's see how Doug Marone and Jacksonville will play this. They're going to go for it from the 11 yard line of the Bucks on fourth down and two and a half, three yards. Needed from Tanner Lee. Extra pressure coming and open receiver. Catch made at the five yard line. It's Crockett again. Brought pressure, and of course, Mike Smith brings us. I don't think any coach in football brings pressure in the red zone more than, than Mike Smith, especially on the well, long third and fourth down opportunities but third and short there you would love to see the corners a little closer to the line of scrimmage if you're me I, I, quarterback's going to identify that that pressure is coming and all he's got to do is get a, a quick ball out as the receivers on the same page that's exactly what happened there and all he can do is come up and make a tackle see how the bucks defense plays that things tighten up a bit five from the five yard line of the bucks tim cook the back tanner lee on the move end zone throw and knocked away incomplete Devontae Harris, uh, Scott Orndon. Well, it was a good job by your by your linebacker there, 52, if you can see him, Nigel Harris. That's where that ball wanted to go, and then late he has to come back to the guy Devontae Harris is covering, and you know, well played. You know, eye discipline is so crucial down here in the red zone. These mister the quarterbacks are going to want a misdirection. You, they want you to have just an ounce of space. There's no room to work with. So just a, a second off, and it's a touchdown. It's a good job by the defense there. Tim Cook. And it'll be third and goal. Jags went on fourth and three, converted. And after a throw and a run, 
clock running just over 10 minutes to go here in the third quarter trying to get their first touchdown of this game I don't think well, we shouldn't be under any other assumption that this is two down territory you go for it on fourth and three inside the 20 they're gonna go for it twice here as well get a stop here first and hand it there Monte Crockett has been the go to guy he's at the bottom of the screen on this drive for Tanner Lee it's a handoff to Tim Cook touchdown Jacksonville plowed right through and the Jacks reach the end zone for the first time tonight. Yeah, it looks like they make go for two here instead of kicking the extra point. Yeah, inside zone run play here. And just you get the double team up front. Don't have enough weight and push up front that Gerald McCoy talked about getting that push off the line of scrimmage from the defensive line. And nobody else there. They had spread them out with those three receivers out there. So there's one less guy in the box and pretty easy score there nice looking drive by Jacksonville and cook at 240 pounds plus once he got motor and nobody was stopping him so they're going to try for two to take the lead Tanner Lee has all day and incomplete coverage was good looked like he could have waited even longer or maybe tried to run that in but the conversion fails Jacks reach the end zone but the Bucks still lead it 10 to 9 third quarter from Raymond James. Nine forty six to go in the third quarter the Bucks hanging on to a one point lead. The Florida Blues scoring drive a dozen plays they went for it on fourth down got the touchdown later in the drive Tim Cook scoring but missing the two point conversion and Jacksonville within a point. It's Bobo Wilson who's been busy at receiver gets up across the 26 yard line see if the Bucks and they are sitting Ryan Griffin after he played the entire first half and Austin Allen the undrafted free agent comes in at quarterback played the last two games two for two in his debut against Tennessee and then he was just one out of seven with an interception in the loss that against the Lions here that looked like the Bucks had it all wrapped up we see his measurables there. He's a shorter guy, but has a good arm. I like to say he's a gamer. It'll be interesting to see if Todd Munkin sticks to the game plan we've seen all day or if he turns around his ball, which of course he can. And there he goes. Dare Ogumbawale. And Alex Kappel, the rookie from Humboldt State, the third round draft pick, trying some center. Well, you get only seven eight guys usually on Sundays to, to play and you got to identify guys that can play swing guys I mean obviously it's been Evan Smith here for a lot a lot of years Adam Geddes was playing center earlier in the game he can be a swing guy at center and guard too so this is Alex Kappa's turn to see if uh, he's got what it takes Allen slips through and gets up across the 30 31 yard line made something out of nothing there you know it's interesting because the roster cuts coming Saturday from down to 53 from 90 and 10 on the practice squad Dirk Cutter said it he makes it a point to personally meet face to face with each player that is not brought back he said I don't want him to walk out of here and feel like they did something wrong yeah he said he owes it to those guys you know, he put in all the work in the offseason I mean it's a long grind now you come in in March and go through OTAs and well, phase one phase two then OTAs and then all the summer and then training camp and his preseason and then just feel like you get unceremoniously dismissed afterwards and I think it's important for coaches to do that play. ball is out here's a flag down as well and the Jacks have it Carol Phillips takes it into the end zone for a Jacksonville touchdown. There was never a signal that that was an incomplete pass, but it'll be reviewed as Blair Brown knocked the ball out of Austin Allen's hands. There is no, there is no penalty on the play. The result of the play is a fumble recovered by the defense for a touchdown. Jerome Boger doing play-by-play -play now. <laughs> I think he's uh, exactly right here, Chris. This ball, you're going to see it's... It's going to be an open hand on Austin Allen, and the pressure's coming off his blind side here. Great rush, just getting by Licky, I think that is, and you see that ball. It's it's not in his hands as it's going forward, so that is the correct call, and Jacksonville being opportunistic, and this is what this defense is all about. I know these aren't the starters, but they did this you know, with impunity last year. It's why they were the number one-ranked defense in football. And all 
Scoring plays, turnovers reviewed. This one has been and confirmed. Would have liked to have seen maybe some Buccaneers scrambling for that loose football as Blair Brown knocked it out and Carol Phillips ran it in. Frustration on the Buccaneers sideline, and they're going to try the Jags and go for two once more to build a seven point lead. So they trail the entire game until they drive in for a touchdown and then get a defensive score. And now have a chance to add to their third quarter lead. Tanner Lee rolling. Throwing and incomplete. Smelter was the target. Buck smelled that one out. 0 for 2 on the two point conversions. But things have tipped a bit at Raymond James. Just over eight minutes to go in the third. And it's the Jags who lead now by five. Jason Pierre Paul looking out from Deerfield Beach and USF played some of his college games right here at Raymond James Stadium. Now a, a buck taking the defense forward. Later in the game, you'll have a chance to vote for the Pro Balance Protein Water Player of the Game. Go to WFLA's Facebook page. We'll announce some candidates and the new vote. Brought to you by Pro Balance Protein Water, not just another sports drink. There's a guy who could be a candidate. Yeah, those two guys you just showed. That's, that, that would be my vote right now. One no, of those but don't two. give it away. We gotta let, <laughs> let people vote. And the, you know, you know, Florida. We our reputation here with votes. We gotta be careful. We we wanna make sure everything is legitimate. Uh, Chris, you would know. I South Florida, you know. <laughs> uh, the Sunshine State. Here's Bobo Wilson. He's a he can be a candidate as well. We'll whittle him down for you. Smothered here. Good special teams by Jacksonville. And a look at the Florida Blues scoring drive. And it was the Jags on the takeaway and returning. We mentioned the top three quarterbacks of the Bucs haven't had any turnovers this preseason, but that was a big one by Austin Allen, whose brother Brandon Allen is with the Los Angeles Rams, spending much of these plays this preseason there as a third string quarterback behind Sean Mannion and Jared Goff. Dario Gumbawale is the running back for Austin Allen. Sean Wilson played much of the first half, most of the first half at running back, and there he goes. And there's a flag on the back end as he got up near the 28 yard line. Defensive holding defense number 54. Five yard penalty at the end of the run. Automatic first down. Ely and Koo. Called for the penalty. Yeah, very rare penalty, defensive holding, but you, know, you see a lot of these big defensive linemen. It's, it's a smart play sometimes because it very rarely gets called. You're trying to clean up the space for your linebacker to come through, and sharp eye by that back judge there. Ogan Bawale cut by the Texans after 2017 and has had opportunities here. Runs big, runs strong. Gets a first down going out of bounds. He's only 5'11". But as we had pointed out before at Wisconsin, he was initially a corner back and moved to running back. Well, he's got some nice power, but he's also got this. That was an excellent first jump cut. You see the speed to get to the edge, and I've seen it numerous times in this preseason already. He's not a name that's out there. You know, everybody wants to talk Sean Wilson right now. When, uh, when Charles Sims was here, it was him, but... It was under the radar. But he's he put some a, good film out there. A practice squad player, if possibly. Allen's throw. Midfield. Breaks a tackle. Austin Johnson. Run out of bounds near the 40 of Jacksonville. Austin Johnson's not much of a receiver, but nice run after the catch. This is just like Anthony Auclair. Jacksonville's usually a very good tackling football team, but two misses picked up big yardage for the tight ends of this Bucks offense. And I like that guy fighting for a position. Who knows where he fits into the rotation? This tight end. They don't have fullbacks on this team. They're all considered tight ends. They got to be able to cross train play on the line of scrimmage as well as be in the backfield. Eight yard pickup, Obo Wilson to the top of your screen. He gets the Bucks. Before the snap, false start. Offense number 87, five yard penalty, still second down. So Matt Weiser, one of those guys fighting for a roster spot, who went to Weiser. High school, and it was his great. I think there's seven of these great, 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 great grandfather who established 
the high school. Come He's on, just trying to establish his career for real. I'm not, I wouldn't make that up. Just you and I talking. That's the Bucks' first penalty, by the way. And Allen is sacked. Jackson chased him down. From Jacksonville State, that's Darius Jackson. Well, he's unblocked, and you know his offenses try to move the pocket and get the defensive end to get some dirty eyes. I say to look inside, maybe not do contain, and he was all over Austin Allen right there. No chance to escape that sack, and now you set up a third and forever for this Bucks offense. And I mean, Austin Allen, not a lot of snaps under center in the preseason. <laughs> Don't be surprised they turn around and hand this ball off upon it. You see the level of experience, how smooth things ran with Ryan Griffin, and you talk about inexperience. Sean Wilson in the game and carrying forward. Got a lot of that yardage back. Well, they needed 17, and he got about 14 well, or 15 well, there. Now you're in the position where it's third and four. You're on the 40. Punting does really nothing fourth for down. you. Fourth, well, yeah. fourth down does nothing for you because you're just, the field is short. You want to give the ball to 20 or give it to 40. Just go for it. I think that's exactly what Dirk Cutter is going to decide to do is go for this on fourth and very manageable now. Third and 17 look awful. Fourth and four looks very doable. But Sean Wilson showed you something that he can make up a lot of yardage. He stays in the game as a receiver. Bottom of your screen. Empty backfield for Austin Allen. Play clock. Now the three on fourth down. Pass incomplete. It looked like he wouldn't have the first down marker, Bobo Wilson. We saw Ryan Griffin execute this exact play much better. Spread out the defense. You're looking for the matchup. He picked the right one, just delivered it late. Jack Seville is off the field. Under five minutes to play in the third quarter. Jacksonville has moved out in front, 15-10. Buck fans, stay tuned. After the game, official Bucks bonus post-game coverage. Dan Lucas, Andy Sabo with highlights, player interviews. Coach Dirk Cutter at the podium. It's Bucks bonus coming up next on your official Bucks station news, Channel 8. Taking over on downs. Tanner Lee leading the offense. Jacksonville with a... Defensive stand of the catch made across midfield. Shane Wynn he thought he had a spectacular catch, but Noah Spence is still out on the field. You said at the top of the broadcast, the designated rusher, former second round pick, Rondy, you wanted to see him try and do something big. Is he, uh, is this roster's his job in jeopardy here? I don't know that it's in jeopardy, but I know they want to see more out of him. He just, he's got to vary his, his rush moves and. He's, this is not his forte playing against the run, but I actually think he's done a pretty decent job holding up there when they've run at him. That was a good example of it right there, just holding the point, forcing it back inside. But his specialty is going to be rushing the passer. He's got so many assets at his disposal right now with JPP, Vinny Curry. He needs to be able to lean on those guys and learn something, learn a counter, find a way to, to, to study offensive tackles and when you get your chance to get in there you got to win I mean that's exactly what a designated pass rusher is they have one on this team and in, in Fowler that's exactly what he is for the Jacksonville Jaguars Jack's facing a third down and three Tanner Lee keeps and then throws Tim Cook with the first out catch inside the 45 Godwin Equine Wike who had earlier had a special teams play making defensive stop you know we mentioned uh, Mike Greenberg earlier wishing him a happy birthday he helps with the contracts I know there's some young some bucks that are coming up with contracts that they want to resign and get get those deals done guys like Quan Alexander Ali Marpet I think Donovan Smith as well yeah they're getting to that point where you have you're gonna get some top heaviness to your roster because you have good players and you want to keep them it's hard I mean <laughs> this landscape now the money is getting out of control Sideline throw, catch is made. It's Monte Crockett. Down at the one. Monte Crockett is having a day today on these backup quarterbacks for Tampa. This is not only a great catch, it's a great throw, but the one on one, this is Devontae Harris in good position, but just start looking for the ball like that. You start looking for the ball like that, you're out of phase, you're a step behind him. And now the Excuse me, Ron, they have changed the call from down at the one to a touchdown. 
Well, it's so ruled a touchdown. They'll have to review it now that it's been called a touchdown to confirm it. Absolutely, and that's that's why they did that. I, not that it's a directive from the league, but officials have kind of been coached up. When it's close, call it what you think it could be, and then maybe go to replay and just decide if it's a touchdown. Now, does he look down to you for I that? Think, I think that knee is down. This is going to be placed yeah. at the half yard line. Yeah, the, I mean the official standing right there made it a point. So I, I don't know if we have two officials that aren't on the same page. I mean, you can overrule somebody, but thankfully they'll review this. Well, where is he down? He's down right yeah, there. See his left knee and is he's down. He's not in. Well before. Yeah, this should come back, but or at least be down. You can see right here the official. But the Bucks corners are they're, they're playing at the line of scrimmage. I know there's been much talk local radio about how these Bucks corners like to play off coverage. It's Mike Smith's M.O. for his corners because they play so much quarters. You know, they, they, they want their corners off so they can see the ball, but put guys on the line of scrimmage, you're susceptible to these type of plays, and well, the corner's got to be able to stand up. Sorry, Chris. No, they've been working on the backups, but you know when they get to the regular season, Brent Grimes, who's your best cover guy, Vernon Hargraves, and you think he's had yeah. a very good training. Yet we haven't seen a lot of him in the preseason. Yeah, he had that, that groin injury, so he was out, but yeah, they, they have talent. I mean, you, you, you go into this offseason, and we can ask Jason like this specific question where they needed to improve and every single GM and defensive coordinator will say we need rushmen yeah. and we need cover guys and they addressed both of those positions one in the in the free agency with those two defensive ends and then drafting the Carlton Davis and that's and what MJ Stewart Jacksonville did to turn their season around along with getting physically better overall more physical however you want it to physical tough I don't know however they uh, the whatever the word is, the wording you want to use but that's what helped them the run is down short of the goal line at the one yard line. Please reset the game clock to two minutes 49 seconds and we'll start on the ready for play. Well, you mentioned that toughness and they, they they got probably the toughest dude one of the toughest dudes I've ever seen in football Calais Campbell last year. And to me he, at one point I thought he could have been defensive player of the year second in the league in sack with 14 and a half and it's it just it's one addition right he was one addition for this team changed the culture changed the way they played football and we as I asked Dirk like you, they practiced against Jacksonville last year what did you see that made them into the team that went to the AFC championship game and said they got tougher as a football team on first and goal Tanner Lee hands to Tim Cook and he does not get in Nathan Basada a free agent for a mile wrapping him up so after all that the Monte Crockett catch it was reviewed after being called one thing and then called another on first and goal. That's the push you look for. Seats were up worthy 56. That's the penetration that Gerald's talking about. When you want to be dominant in the run game, you need to be able to fire off, be lower than the offensive lineman, push them back, and then allow everybody else to come to the party and make the tackle. So a helmet get knocked off down there, and now second and goal from inside a yard. Cook remains the back. And a whistle before the snap and a flag at the 10-yard line. Before the snap, ball start. Offense, number 61, five-yard penalty, still second down. Well, that'll change things for Doug Marone wanting to just ram it in a little bit. <laughs> that, that's frustrating for Doug Marone, head coach. And it's going to force uh, Nate Hack, the offensive coordinator, to come up with a different plan here. You see they bring out two wide receivers now, but still in the red zone, and you know, it's it's preseason football, right? And you're still <laughs> trying to identi identify guys. I wouldn't be surprised they turn around and hand this football off again. But this is the exact same formation now that they scored on. Three re wide receivers down at the bottom, see if they get the same type of result. Tim Cook to carry, and brought down to bring up third and goal. Oh yeah, Tanner Lee has looked pretty good running this offense. He really, really has. I think you know some people question whether or not he could his talent because he's got talent. He's tall. He's got a strong arm. He seems to have command. But he gets a game sometimes, especially in college, and he just kind of froze up. He didn't play his best ball. But he was a standout when he went to the uh, his pro day and got on some people's radar. Protecting and trying to add to a five-point lead. It's Tim Cook and the Bucks swarm and keep him out of the end zone. Exact same formation 
flip the other way. Fool me once, shame on me. <laughs> shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on you. And that's exactly what these Bucks guys did. They understood what was coming at them. See the penetration up front. Rally into the football. Levin Hats trying to get in there. Stopped them short. Jaguars are going to go for this again. This would be an awesome stand if the Bucks find a way to keep them out. Same formation. Three receivers down at the bottom. Running back offset. I bet you this is a boot. Yeah, he'll fake to Cook and roll right. Is that what you're thinking? Tanner Lee gives to Cook. Touchdown, Jacksonville. They kept pounding away, and eventually, despite the penalty, add to their lead, get reaching the end zone. I wonder if they're going to go for two or just kick the point after. I think they're going to think they're going to kick this one, Chris. But yeah. I, I don't think I don't think their uh, I don't think their playbook is this narrow going to be this narrow <laughs> <laughs> That's four, four runs the exact same. Yeah, and, it, and they worked eventually the bottom line as Lambeau is in to kick the point after look if you have Leonard Fournette I, I, I think you might be doing that running back coach Tyrone Wheatley play with my brother in New York former Michigan mm -hmm. Wolverine I believe. And Lambeau the extra point. <laughs> Well, at one point it was 10-3, a Buccaneer lead. Now the Jags lead, led by Tanner Lee in a solid defense. Jags up 22-10, late in the third. Save over 30% on individual game pricing with Bucs season passes, including games like the home opener against the Eagles, the defending Super Bowl champs. That's September 16th. And you can enjoy benefits just for crew members, including exclusive tours of One Buck Place, which, by the way, the Advent Healthcare Center joining the sponsorship there. Game day discounts you also can benefit from exclusive year-round events. Join the crew today. Visit Buccaneers.com slash tickets. She's still here. That's all right. <laughs> Devoted fan. Get her a tryout. Ten seconds remaining in the third. It's Bobo Wilson from inside his own goal line. Room for Bobo to go. Knocked down up around the 35-yard line and a tough hit. An animated tough hit by Logan Cook, the punter, and a flag down. That was an explosive run. Hey, that's, that's the essence of Bobo Wilson right there. That was Personal foul, initiating low in the head, initiating contact with the helmet. Kicking team, number nine. 15-yard penalty at the end of the play. First down. And the call is on Logan Cook. The Florida Blues scoring drive. Cook hammering away in the end zone for Jacksonville. Now, the NFL helmet rule, Rondé, they were worried how this was going to be called. They've really been averaging in the preseason less than two a game. I think that's the second one we've seen tonight. But, I mean, that's across all games. It's, there's confusion from the outside. I think they're looking for that posture. You know, the angle, the, the flat back, head down. It, it confused it by adding the incidental element to it. I don't necessarily think it's going to change football it's going to change the way guys try to tackle obviously it's going to change the way outcome of games but they're trying trying to make it safer game and you can't blame them for that end of the third quarter on the Mazda field alive scoreboard Jacksonville leading the Bucks. Start of the fourth quarter in the final preseason game for 2018. Jacksonville trailing much of the game has now taken a 12-point lead. And a look at the third quarter statistics brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Take on summer with big savings from Ford during the summer sales event. Allen to throw. And he will be sacked. Remember, it was his turnover that turned the tide of this game. Well, he's seen a lot of pressure, and it's, it's evident in the stats here we know what Ryan Griffin did in the first half of this football game but since Austin Allen has come in the game he's been under uh, duress shall we say so they far in this game have brought the heat Rodney Barber Chris Myers and uh, joined in the booth by Jason Light general manager 
of the Buccaneers will chat with us uh, through a few moments here in the fourth quarter. Let's see what happens here on third down and 16. Ryan Griffin playing the first half. It was outstanding. Giving the Bucks the lead. And off to Sean Wilson. Bouncing off tacklers and going up the sideline. It was a third and 17 a moment ago where he picked up 12, 13 yards on a delay. And I think they're going to make the same decision. Go for this on fourth down. Sean Wilson now twice gets you in a third and forever. Picks up big yardage and gives yourself an opportunity to go for it on fourth down here. See if they have better results this time around. First of all, they got to protect Austin Allen. You got to imagine that Todd Munkin's going to want to get the ball out of his hands and see if they come back with that same empty formation. See if he can make a better decision here than he did last time. The free agent from Duke picked up 12 on fourth down and four from the 45 yard line of Jacksonville. Allen flutters and incomplete. Trying to get to Dante Dye, who was just picked up this week, brought back to the Bucks. Jacksonville will take over on downs and will be joined by Jason Light, general manager of the Bucks. When we continue here from Raymond James Stadium. Welcome back to Raymond James Stadium. The Bucks get ready a week from Sunday, opening on the road against the New Orleans Saints. Jason Light, general manager of the Bucks, joining us in the booth, and thanks for uh, for coming in. I appreciate you having me. All right. Uh, so, Jameis Winston, uh, we know after Saturday, no contact for the next three weeks, but he did get up and address the team last night. Felt it was uh, important, and people responded well. Ryan Fitzpatrick will start your first three, and you have a Ryan Griffin who has come on strong here. So you must feel good given the circumstances, Jason, about your quarterback situation. Yeah, we do. Uh, all three of them have been playing really well this preseason, and Ryan Griffin picked up where he left off here tonight. Um, you know, it's just, it just feels really good to have two guys that you know you can go out there and, and give you a chance and do more than that, actually. So um, we're very fortunate. Now, we're going to miss Jameis. Uh, Jameis has been playing well as um, having his best preseason. But, uh, you know, we have these guys. Build, so. on, build on Ryan Griffin for me for a minute. Just how far he's come since you've been here. I know we picked him up off uh, from the Saints when they let him go. Just his maturation. How far has he come in giving you that comfort that if Fitzpatrick goes down at some point in this three-game stretch that he can play for you? You know, last year before the, the Bengals game, before our preseason versus Bengals, he, he was actually uh, looked like he was going to win the number two job. Yeah. He was throwing the ball really well. Um, nothing against Ryan Fitzpatrick. He just kind of came on and got the job kind of by default last year. But Fitzpatrick's you know, been great since. But, you know, we've, we've never been down on Ryan. It's just unfortunate injury last year in the, in the preseason where, you know, he lost the job. So he's uh, we're very excited that that he's, you know, didn't go in the tank. He came back. He came back strong. And this guy just gets better and better. Tanner Lee with the completion. And Amari Coleman is the injured Buccaneer. We hope that he's okay. And we will check on him and have more with Jason Light in just a moment. And here's Amari Coleman coming off the field. And you'll see it in the replay, taking him to the blue tent and obviously evaluating him for a concussion as he goes down to make this tackle. Helmet to the back of the knee, and it's... There's a spotter upstairs. Even if he hadn't laid on the ground, they would have taken him in there. Trainer automatically calling down. So it's a 13-yard pickup at a first down for Jacksonville at the 41. And they run the football, continuing to chase him light. We'll stick with the quarterbacks here. I mean, I ask the question everybody wants to know. Jameis Winston, three-game suspension. Regardless what happens in those first three games, I think Jameis Winston comes back and he's the starter immediately. Obviously, he's had a fantastic preseason uh, throwing the ball in practice how it's translated to the games he's grown up it seems your opinion <laughs> uh, well Tough you know question. we've got we've got <laughs> I don't think it would be fair to anybody right now to just lay out that plan and to say you know, definitively what it's going to be I think uh, you know the circumstances at hand at that point in the season um, where we're at how Ryan's playing um, you know it's a short week um, there's a lot of factors at play there so you know Ryan Fitzpatrick Ryan Griffin whoever it is, is is playing lights out I don't think it's fair right now just to say yes automatically he's going to be the guy now he may be so 
um, you know, Dirk and I, um, Dirk in particular, has a, you know, he's got some time to think about that. Devontae Harris almost with the interception. Uh, and again, the option for next year picked up on the contract of Jameis Winston and quite a bit of a financial increase there as Tanner Lee dumps it short and should pick up another spinning first down inside the 25 yard line. Now, I will, I will say this that, that we are very excited where Jameis is right now. And he is playing to the, you know, right now in the preseason and the way he finished up last year. He's playing to where we thought he could be. So, he, and there's more, there's more, even more potential there. So, um, we're very excited about having James Winston, Winston with us. Any concern? I mean, if, if you, you've never dealt with a situation like that, but any concern he comes back and has lost something, hasn't had the reps for three weeks. I mean, I know he has a plan. He's going to miss football. We all know how much he loves it. But any concern that he might need a week? working with the team to come back well you know no concern that he's not he is going to work he's going to work his tail off i mean he's he's one of those guys that i mean he's dotted every i crossed every t in terms of what he's going to be doing in, in, that, in those three weeks so i'm not concerned that he's not going to put the work in but you know there's just some unknown you don't know um where he's at at that point um where we're at at that point so just can't make that determination right now. Yeah, and it's a it's a brutal first three games for, for anybody, but if, if the team is doing well with who's under at the helm, then you know, maybe you don't rush back even though you know Winston is your franchise quarterback. I did want to ask you how you were able to pull off the Jason Pierre Paul trade there because that, that he has uh, by everybody's account been terrific here in practice, working, his work ethic, his influence with this team and an area that you wanted to improve the pass rush. Yeah, no, it was an area for sure. And, you know, at that point, we had already done a lot of homework on the draft and knew that it wasn't a real strong draft for defensive ends. Um, you know, with Jason, it was just a case where, you know, got together with my guys. We, of course, knew who Jason Pierre-Paul was. In fact, we were very interested in signing him a couple years ago for agency. And it was one of those, why the heck not? Give him a call and find out. So started that at the Combine and then... We eventually got it done. Yeah. Reset the draft for me real quick, Jason, because you guys pulled off a, a coup, right? I was at the draft. I announced the first or the second and third round picks for you guys, and you go in with nothing, and you come out with six guys that probably going to make your football team. Well, we wanted to make sure we had extra second round picks so you could at least announce, <laughs> announce one so of them. So he had something to do. Yeah, so he had something to do. And some defensive backs, too, right, at his wheelhouse. <laughs> well, you know, we spent weeks... Mike Greenberg, myself, John Spitek, Mike Bill, Rob McCartney, um, putting together who might want to trade up, what we would ask for if they did, and basically made it what would we actually ask for. Let's don't just settle for anything. If it's a quarterback team coming up for a quarterback, we're going to ask for a little bit more than we normally would. And we had every scenario covered, and it was very smooth on draft day. Got the call, told them what we wanted. Told them we had to know right away, and then boom. So it just, everything, all the stars aligned for us. And, you know, hey, if Josh Allen turns out to be a great quarterback for them, it's a it's a, it's a a win-win. Yeah, and, and Davis and Stewart have, have shined in the preseason. We haven't seen Vita Vea play. We saw him a moment ago there with uh, JPP. Uh, but he, at least, they're being very cautious from what we're told that there's still a chance he could play. Uh, the opening weekend. Yeah, we're being very extremely cautious, especially a, a big man like that with a calf injury, a strain. Um, you know, we're just going to make sure that he's ready to play. We, we know enough about Vita to know that what he can do and that he's going to make a big impact, impact for us. And that Lambeau field goal of, from 40 yards, giving Jacksonville the 25-10 lead. And Bobo Wilson battling for a spot. Back to receive. He's had a, a big night. To check out his return. I did want to ask you about Kendall Beckwith in terms of the you know, the off the car accident off season, where that stands in terms of roster decisions. Also on the way up to the 22. You know, Kendall, you know we're gonna we're gonna meet again tomorrow. Um, we're gonna make a determination at that point whether we keep him on the. It's in his particular case, it's the same as PUP, but the the physically N enabled. Yeah, form. NFI, and uh, you know then. At that point, you know, maybe we'll decide that he needs a few extra weeks and it'd be it's always nice to have a player coming back to different ports of the season, um, you know, to refresh your roster and bring in the cavalry. As, as, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you like to say. All right. Yeah. An another tough question for you here, uh -oh. Jason. And I know but this season you go in, 
there's got to be some urgency, right? We all know the situation here. We haven't been to the playoffs in X number of years. A decade, years. I believe. Yeah, a decade of football. High expectations last year, somewhat under the radar right now in terms of national expectation. Speak to that. Speak to where you think this football can go this fo this season. Well, you know, it, it's, a, it's a different vibe this year, um, and it's good. It's a good thing. There's a lot of, like you said, sense of urgency. The guys want to win now. Um, the guys are bonding more than um, I've seen in previous years. It's a great locker room. In fact, we were able to get Ryan Jensen, um, who's going to make a huge impact for us because he liked that that type of uh, atmosphere. He he said, I know that there's a big sense of urgency. He used those exact words. And that's how I operate at my best. So, um, you know, sometimes when, when guys, uh, when, the, when the pressure's on, you get the most out of guys. After a loss of three, Sean Wilson in the backfield for Austin Allen. And that's Bobo Wilson. Top of your screen, Allen to throw. And on target. Receivers have been, and Rondé said it's probably the deepest, most improved position on this football team. Yeah, it really is. That's definitely our strength. We've got Bobo. Bobo's having a nice night tonight. Um, you know, Justin Watson uh, has been very impressive. Freddie Martino has been very steady. Those guys kind of at the bottom end. It's it's going to be. We've got some tough decisions to make um, on how many we're going to keep and who we're going to keep. How do you make that determination? I know the roster decisions come down to injuries, guys that you need, but. What, I know at one point you were thinking five receivers. At this point, you've got to be thinking six receivers on this roster. I mean, Justin Watson, what he's been able to do. You just mentioned Freddie Martino and Bobo Wilson. Yes, it's a deep position, but these guys have shown the ability that they can play. They can play in the NFL. They can. They, they, they all have thrived on special teams. How do you come about making that decision? <laughs> it's going to be tough. Yeah, it's it a really tough is. One. It is going to be tough. And if we just nailed it right on the head there. Another catch. This is the Irvin Phillips, excuse me, after Dante Dye made a unique catch in an area where Wilson was, but two big gainers for this offense at Austin Allen. Well, you nailed it when you said special teams, and that's normally how you make that decision. And all of these guys have contributed and done really well on special teams. So if you do keep six, you can probably have six active on game day, and they can give you some help there. After a gain of 28, Allen... Line of scrimmage at 22 and a flag down, and that pass is intercepted. It's a takeaway for Jacksonville. D.D. Delaney, D. Delaney has it. Oh, Ill-advised decision Holy there. Offense number 73. That penalty is declined. The result of play is an interception. First down, Jacksonville. We've just seen about four great passes by Austin Allen. This, he just got to eat this football. No reason to force this in there. He sees, doesn't see the defender on the sideline. It's a giveaway by the Bucks offense. With Rondé Barber, Chris Myers, Jason Light, general manager of the Bucks, watching with us at a chance to vote for your Pro Balance Protein Water Player of the Game. Go to WFLA's Facebook page and cast your vote. Candidates, Ryan Griffin, Bobo Wilson, will announce the winner before the end of the game. We appreciate the votes. So you got there, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> he can't swing the votes. You already tried. Rondé was already trying to swing. He was trying to get a defensive guy in there every time. It's a tie. As Tanner Lee completes... We just saw a rush there by, by Noah Spence. Still in the game well into the fourth quarter. Again, tell me what he needs to do. What, what does he need to prove to you in order to be the designated pass rusher on this football team? Well, Noah, you're never going to knock him on his effort and his hunger for wanting to be out there and, and make plays. Um, he just needs to continue to develop as a rusher. Come up, use his arsenal, use a variety, use a bag of tricks, um, not run by the quarterback, not you know, set up with the same moves all the time. And he's getting better at that. He's getting better. So um, this is a good opportunity here tonight for him to get out there and play um, more. Um, so he's, we, we haven't lost faith in him. Um, coach Buckner's a hell of a coach, and he's, he's showing improvement. Offense, number 76, 10-yard penalty, we play first down. Uh, Sean Wilson, a, a free agent find. Looks like he's made this team along with all of your 
draft picks. So when you have the roster cuts you have to make, Jason, you're also I know you're always looking to improve your team however you can. Is there a certain area, I would guess, offensive line that if some other player somewhere becomes available that can help that you'll you'll bring somebody else in and swap somebody? Yeah, it's it's, it's a possibility. Um, you know, there's about between 40, 50 guys that get claimed uh, every year. Um, very few of them really make an impact. There are, you know, exceptions, obviously, that, that, that do. Um, you know, we've invested a lot of time in the guys that we have, and um, I'm not saying that we're we're opposed to doing it because we are. Trust me, uh, these guys, Rob McCartney, and these guys have looked at every single player in the league, and myself. So we're we're gonna we're always striving to get better. It's that practice squad right now that we want to make sure that we get the best possible guys um, on there because we 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 use that practice squad as an extended version of our 53. And over the last three years, we've elevated a guy 41 different times, I yep. think. Yep. And you know some of these guys, Alan Cross and Adam Humphries, Cam Brady, um, they can become valuable. Uh, commodities on your football yeah, I was team. thinking of a guy before this game who had to prove something in, in preseason four Adam Humphreys was the guy that came to mind for me I remember his rookie year and just all we talked about that last game and look what he's become now I have, I have one more question for you and it, it, it's, it's it's about the preseason as a whole how much credence do you put into these games whether it's winner or losing the way you play like, what do you take out of these four preseason football games well this one's a little different right now we're playing with a lot of guys that aren't going to make our team so um, but we want to this one's more of an evaluation of those guys and across the league as are the other ones but you're getting more you're getting more of an extended look at these guys that are bubble players but I think I think you want to win you know you want to win these games and you want it to carry over into the season and you just want the culture of the locker room to get used to winning and you can't uh, you, you know it's it's just invaluable and especially coming from behind or Winning in the last minute, um, all those games that we lost last year, one-score games, um, I think it's it helps turn the tide. It helps change the culture. Yeah, 10 one-score games, a 3-7 and seven record in that for the Bucs, whereas teams like Atlanta, Carolina swung the other way here on 4th and 12. Noah Spence, by the way, deflecting that. And a punt that goes into the end zone. So you swing that the other way, and you're in contention. Yeah, three teams from your division that made the, the playoffs last year. Can we Do we have the Adam Humphreys? Because that was one of the most spectacular plays. I know Dirk Cutter calls a timeout with Chris Conte when the Lions Friday night, right? We're trying the long field goal, and he's going to put Humphreys back there. We know he's got great return ability, and I Welcome love what Humphreys said when he was running. He said the crowd was going to let me know whether, you know, I had a path up. But you see, 109 yards. He's going to come out of the end zone. <laughs> this was awesome. <laughs> this was fun to he's watch. He's just a football player, you know? And he's just got great instincts, and he's just got a never-say-die attitude. And right here at the end, I was a little worried somebody was going to come out of nowhere. <laughs> he said he saw it on the big screen, so he was... And there were no flags, which is always a, a nice thing as uh, the Bucs have the football and the clock running just over 5.40 to go. Well, Jason, thanks very much for your time, as always, through the preseason. We appreciate you coming in, you and the coaching staff and the Buccaneers uh, being so cooperative with Rondé and I. I know the Buck fans like it, and uh, we wish you a great season. All right, have fun. Appreciate it. Yep. Thanks, buddy. Take yep. care. Got it. Nice haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, he's not talking to me. He's talking, he's talking to Rondé. Rondé keeps his hair very, very short. Yes, it's, it's right. easy. The Buck fans here would like to see a more aggressive approach on offense, but just don't want anybody to get hurt with the last five minutes remaining here in the preseason. And John's on the line. There is Allen opening it up, trying to go deep. And Irvin Phillips, the target incomplete. Austin Allen, the, go back to that last drive, minus the one incompletion. And who knows where his role is? I mean, you, you, you become a player that's been in the camp here uh, for, for all offseason, all preseason. You're just looking to get some snaps underneath you. He didn't get any snaps uh, early in camp because of that situation at quarterback, trying to get Jameis first-team reps with Fitzpatrick getting first-team reps and Ryan uh, Griffin having the get his work in as well so Austin Allen kind of goes by the wayside this is really his first action that I've seen other than last week at yeah. Detroit that, 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 that you mentioned earlier but he's made some nice throws I mean I, I mentioned earlier that he's a gamer you know, the situation's on the line he looks pretty good and speaking of looking really good <laughs> that's now the third run that we've seen Sean Wilson just the change of direction that this guy has he's a jitterbug down there I don't, I don't even know his measurables was he 5'8 yeah, generously he, listed at 5'8 yeah, generously 5 he's only 185 pounds and and then it was a third and eight and he runs to get the first down 
And whether you're with the second or third or fourth team, uh, offense or defense, whatever he's going against, from his point of view, he's been productive. Taking a breather, Alex passes, deflected incomplete. So we can say that behind Peyton Barber and Jaquiz Rogers and Ronald Jones, the second round pick from USC, there is Sean Wilson. You know, when you get in a situation where you have that many running backs on your squad, how many are you going to keep up on, on game day? And you you got to think that, that Rodgers will be up. He is so valuable on special teams for, for this football team. He can be a situational runner if you need him. We've seen him start many games for Tampa since he's been here. And it's obviously the familiarity that he has with their cutter system. But a guy like Sean Wilson, man, hard to keep him off the field when he has that kind of dynamism to his game. Divide Redding, free agent from Indiana, who was signed, uh, was more recently brought into the league by the Chiefs, just picked up this week. But Sean Wilson, eight carries, 45 yards. He's also been out as a receiver. I did want to mention with Jason Light, who did get a contract extension as the general manager, of course, Dirk Cutter, uh, his contract, one year remaining this season, and thus some of the sense of urgency. And I do get the sense he's always been an aggressive uh, play caller that with this team, this offense, the kinds of receivers around Winston or Fitzpatrick uh, from O.J. Howard to Mike Evans and Deshaun Jackson that uh, we're going to see as that pass is incomplete. Uh, an aggressive season from Dirk Cutter on this Buccaneer team. I don't, I don't see why not, Chris. I mean, it, it, it's time for this team. And you mentioned it in preseason one, the first game of the season. When you have that many weapons on offense, you have to be aggressive. With them. Yes, you're going to spread the ball around. But when you have Mike Evans at your disposal, you have Deshaun Jackson, who has shown this preseason he can take the top off of defenses. When you have Chris Godwin, who was coming to his own, probably the second best receiver on this football team. And then you have... Adam Humphreys, who we were just mentioning, and what he's able to do in the slot with O.J. Howard. And, I mean, God, you want to drop back, throw the football, get the ball in your playmaker's hands. I'm excited about it. You should be excited about it if you're a Bucks fan to have that many weapons on one side of the football. And you're going against teams. So by the way, our Pro Balance Protein Water vote that we asked you to jump in on with Ryan Griffin and Bobo Wilson. It's it's close. Apparently, we're getting on um, the go to the WFLA News Channel 8 Facebook page and vote. It's... Uh, it's tight, so we'll, we'll give the results here in, in just a moment. But I, I was going to say this division, I mean, Matt Ryan and Drew Brees and you know, Cam Newton now with North Turner as offensive coordinator, and all three of those teams went to the playoffs last year. And, and on the other side of the ball, that's why you, you improve your pass rush with JPP or you add a beat of A, and you improve the secondary with depth at, at corner because you're going against those kind of guys to try to jockey for position in the division. Well, you know me. I'm a guy that believes defense. We can look no further than Jacksonville. I mean, talk, say, talk all you want about Blake Bortles and, and the offense and, and what they were able to do last year. They won because of that defense. There is no question in my mind that they have assumed that, that mantle as the dominant defense in the NFL. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. And it, and it wins games for you. They made great additions on that side of the ball and turned into this, this team out of nowhere. Now, conversely, the Bucs have done the exact same thing on the other side of the ball. The additions that they've made, the drafts that they've had, Jason Light and his drafts have been outstanding. That needs to translate into wins for this football team. And, and I got to believe that this is the year that it happens. Another penalty on Jacksonville, but a strong run by Brandon Wilds. Down the sideline, eventually brought down. And Jacksonville will move the chains. I want to look at the schedule, the regular season schedule, because we've mentioned, and I think the, the Bucks fans are well aware of how difficult they got more attention with the first three games. Where you open on the road against the Saints. And you're home with the Eagles. And, of course, you know, Tony Dungy, a special night, will be honored in the uh, ring of honor, and then you've got the Bears. So if you can get two and two before the bye, at, you know, I mean, yeah, maybe you do better, but you don't want to go 0-3. Yeah, circumstance of your schedule is tough. You have that kind of schedule coming out. <laughs> Super Bowl champion. Steelers are what they are. And, yeah. Yeah. Talk about being a tough football team. But here's where you can make up some ground. Yeah, here you make up ground, but you're just talking about being a tough football team. It is tough to go to New Orleans and play, especially opening it. That is the loud, one of the loudest places I have ever played uh, in, in that dome down there. And then you get to the, the meat of the schedule. You got Cleveland at home. Then you get into the, some division games. I think it, it's imperative for this team to come away with one win, at least one win out of the first three, and then take it from there. Now, 
best case scenario, you win two or three, and then you have that situation that we asked Jason about. Jason about. What are you doing with Jameis Winston when you come back? But it, it's going to be tough sledding. And another tough run from Brandon Wilds. Yeah, that stretch of the schedule where there's they have three straight home games, late October, and then and then the Panthers and Saints, your division opponents back to back. I think that could be key to the Bucks surviving. I, they're not getting a lot of love nationally uh, around the country, I, and I, I think a lot of that is because just how good the division, everybody else in the division is. Well, I mean, you got three, you know, MVP type quarterbacks on other teams, and it starts at that position in the NFL. There's a reason why they all make a hundred and whatever million dollars now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's 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 the it's the paramount position in the NFL, and you got to go against them twice every year. We've reached the two-minute warning in preseason game number four, Jacksonville leading Tampa Bay 25-10. Yeah, thanks for voting. Look at the winner of the player of the game brought to you by Pro Balance Protein Water. That's not just another sports drink. It's Bobo Wilson edging out Ryan Griffin. I don't think I influenced that at all, but he has had a fantastic show tonight, fighting for one of those probably last two wide receiver positions here with Freddie Martino and Justin Watson. And I would not want to be Jason Light and Coach Cutter. And they have to make some of these tough decisions on all these players. They've really shown an ability to play this game in the NFL. And one of them probably is going to not be here come Sunday. Hey, a shout out to Rick McEwen, who handed out a book, uh, the late Tom McEwen, called Press Pass, which Tampa native, longtime writer, one of the great, if you're a sports fan in, in the Tampa St. Pete area, it's worth checking out. And uh, a lot of memories, of course, a lot of the Bucks history mentioned in there, along with other Tampa Bay, St. Pete area sports over the years. He was a great cover of sport, wasn't he? Yep. He was a great voice. And his son, influential in the early years of the Buccaneers preseason broadcast. And, of the television. Also a shout out to Skip Valle, general manager of WFLA, helping us to put on the Buccaneers broadcast. Yeah, thanks, Skip, for bringing us back, buddy. It was. <laughs> <laughs> he had no choice, yes. I think. Uh, Ryan Manal, WFLA news director. Steve Blanchard, the sales general sales manager for WFLA. Our thanks too to Nelson Luis and all the guys with the Bucks behind the scenes. We we talked about Chase and Dirk Cutter. Cooperative with us, but Nelson Luis, Michael Pahanic, Alan Barrett, Chris King, Brooke Skelly, Kara Johnson, communications intern. Yes, even interns get mentioned. Absolutely. As we appreciate all the work you put in, and so do the Buccaneers. Preseason, a lot of extra people needed, or a lot of extra players. And yes, Saturday, boy, 1,200 around the league. You got a 1,200 guys. All goes over. First be Looking for work, shuffled around. Yeah, it's very interesting nowadays, Chris, with this. 90-man 90, 90 roster carry to the last preseason week it, only because all the cuts are happening at the same time and that is a big pool of guys that hit the hit the street all all at once and it, it's tough to, to filter through them so I, mean, I was actually in the building the other day watching Rob McCartney and, 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 and a couple of those guys look at film just to identifying guys that might be on the street and you know are, is that guy better than the guy that we have it's, they're tough decisions it's a, it's, a, it's a heck of a process but generally get it right you were asking tough questions of Jason Light how many how many games this Bucks team gonna win this year as men more than me on the spot yeah right I, you know what this team has the ability to at least win eight games I, I think that and if they if they get hot and this offense is as explosive as it's shown this week I don't see any reason why they can't be what Jacksonville was last year they have the talent they've been Incorporated some key players at key positions, and we should expect more from them. And, and, and we, they we all know, yeah, we all, we all know that the time is now for this Buccaneers football team. Otherwise, the time to wait. Yeah, otherwise there could be more changes. But here they wrap up the preseason with a two and two record, winning their first two, having the lead in the last two. But once it got down to the second and third, fourth players. The opposition took over. It's Jacksonville's win tonight in the Battle of Florida teams. We'll be back to wrap things up. Post-game show coming your way on many of our affiliates as the Buccaneers close out the 2018 preseason.